Hey squad, Sykes here and thank you for taking the time out to click on this video. If you enjoy what you see then please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for more Sea of Thieves content. So in this video I'm going to be doing a complete guide on how to complete all 24 gold challenges for the Fate of the Damned event in order to get your hands on the new Soul Flame items, which in my opinion are some of the best in the game. The challenges were released every week, but as of this video they are all now available for you to complete, so let's go. So first up we have the 6 Fate of the Wild Shores challenges, firstly a light in dark places. So for this one you need to simply kill 10 purple or green shadow skeletons. This can be easily completed by finishing the search for wild plentiful shadows of fate voyage from Lorena, more on that in a bit, or you can do this through a fort of the damned. A reading festival. So for this one you need to find Umbra's journal over on Crooked Mast. This is hard to reach as you have to use your cannons in order to get there. Head to the North Spire and you will see a platform and a beacon overlooking the water. Fire yourself up and down to land on the platform and you'll be able to find Umbra's journal and light the beacon with a green or purple flame all at the same time. A Dying Light. So this one you need to collect both the green flame and the purple flame from the Well of Fate on the Ferry of the Damned. Remember, the green flame is from dying to skeletons and the purple flame is from dying to snake venom. Tavern Talk. This one is the easiest by far. Simply head to an outpost and speak to Lorena, who is leaning up against the post outside the tavern's entrance, and this one will be achieved. Wild Lights of Plenty. Light beacons across the wilds and the shores of plenty with either the green or purple flames of fate. So where are the beacons? So there is a beacon at Mermaid's Hideaway. This is accessible by foot, so just simply head to the centre of the island, Turn right up the path and the beacon can be found above the lagoon. Cannon Cove Beacon. Slightly tricky as this can only be accessed by shooting yourself out of a cannon. Aim your cannon at the central rock formation. Better to go up and down if not you could shoot yourself over the entire island. Once on top, head to the highest point to light the beacon which is to the east side of the island. Smuggler's Bay. This one is pretty straightforward. Simply head to the top of the island and head to the central area. The beacon can be found overlooking the bay for you to light. Kraken's Fall. This beacon is slightly hidden away but is accessible by foot again. It is on the north side of the island and can be found on the top of the rock formation that is pointing out to the east side overlooking the low areas and the beach. And finally, the Marauder's Arch Beacon. Again, pretty straightforward as you need to head up to the main arch. I would head up from the north side and keep going until you hit the rock bridge on the arch in the centre. There you will find the beacon for you to light. Remember, all those beacons need to be lit with the purple or with the green flame of fate. Finally, light them up. Very easy this one after you've collected the green and purple flames, either from the well of fate or from completing the voyage. Light all your lanterns on your boat with a mix of green and purple light. So the second week's worth of challenges, the faint of ancient sands. So the Fire of the Ancients challenge is light all the beacons across the ancient isles with either the blue or white flames of fate. So where are the beacons? There is one at Plunder Valley. The beacon can be found at the very, very top of the island and is accessible by foot. You may have to weave your way around this big island, but as long as you're heading for the top, you'll be able to find it and light it. Crook's Hollow, again accessible by foot and placed at the very top of the island on the south side, may require some jumping around to get on top of rocks to light the beacon. And finally, Devil's Ridge, again accessible by foot as you want to head to the top of the island looking out to the north. However, don't head right to the top, instead looking west as the beacon can be found sitting above the waterfall. Remember, all of those beacons need to be lit with the blue or the white flame of fate. Light and Shadow. Again, you need to kill 10 skeletons, but this time a combo of blue and white Shadow of Fate skeletons. This can be achieved by completing the hunt for hidden ancient shadows of Fate Voyage from Lorena, more on that in a bit again, or through a Fort of the Damned. Time to Dialogue. This again is another really easy one to complete. Simply die and head down to the Ferry of the Damned and have a quick conversation with the Ferryman. Dead Letters. For this, you have to read Umbridge Journal over at the Fort of the Damned. Head up to the top of the fort where the vault's entrance can be found, head left and you will see a single outlook post. Head up the ladder and then do a 180 and you will see the journal tucked away to your left. The light at the end. 
You will need to make another trip down to the Well of Fate in the Ferry of the Damned, this time to collect the blue and white flames. Remember, the blue flame can be collected after dying to a shark, and the white flame after dying from being struck by lightning, so you'll need to do a bit of storm chasing for this one. Finally, shining example, after you have collected your blue and white flames by dying or from the voyage, simply light all the lanterns on your ship blue or white to complete this goal. Now week 3 challenges Fate of the Roaring Skies, the heat of battle. This time you will need to have your fire bombs on hand as you will have to kill 5 skeletons using fire. A point is they don't have to be Shadow of Fate skeletons, they can simply be any skeletons you come across across the Sea of Thieves. Only trying to help, completed by getting yourself killed by a player from another crew. However, this doesn't have to be an enemy player but could also be completed by getting a player in your own alliance to do you a favour. A Fateful Encounter. You may have guessed it by now, but yes, you will have to kill 10 Shadow Skeletons of Fate, but this time they have to be red or pink. This can be accomplished through the In Pursuit of Prowling Devilish Shadows of Fate from Lorena, more on that in a bit, I promise, or through A Fort of the Damned. Roaring Flames. Light the beacons in the Devil's Roar with either the red or pink Flame of Fate. So where are these beacons? There is one at Fetcher's Rest. The beacon is accessible by foot and can be found on the north side of the island. Head up to the top of the cliff and you will find the beacon looking out over to the east. Ruby's Fall. Again, accessible by foot and near the bridge that connects the two rock formations in the centre of the island. Head up from either the north or south side as the beacon can be found in the centre on a wooden platform near the bridge. Devil's First. This beacon is also accessible by foot and can be found on top of the main rock formation on the north side of the island. From the Ashes. You will need to make a final trip down to the Well of Fates, so this time to collect the pink and red flames. Remember, the pink flame can be collected from dying to a player from another crew, and the red flame from dying to fire. And finally, Inferno's Light. Yep, you guessed it, you will have to light the lanterns on your ship, a combination of red and pink lights. And in the final set of challenges, week 4, Defeat the Damned, and probably the hardest set of challenges to complete. A Rite of Passage. Simply begin a Fort of the Damned by placing a Ritual Skull onto the skeleton in the cage. This doesn't have to be just you, but it can also be a member of your crew. From Beyond the Grave. Probably the most difficult of all the challenges as you have to kill Grey Marrow five times. The easiest way of doing this is by completing the voyages from Lorena as the Grey Marrow that spawns at the end of each voyage is a lot weaker compared to the Grey Marrow that spawns during the final wave of the Fort of the Damned. Voyages of the Damned. Now this one's probably the most complex to complete as I'm now going to go into details of all the different voyages that you have available from Lorena. This goal challenge is awarded by completing all three of those voyages all the way through to the end. To start, simply head to Lorena and purchase all three voyages from her for free. Each voyage starts differently but follows the same pattern. The first voyage, the search for wild plentiful shadows of fate, takes place across the wilds and shores of plenty. First, you will need to head to Duke on Lagoon of Whispers. He will ask you to help him recover his special grog. Find the shovel in the sand nearby and start digging. Dig up the grog and hand it to Duke and he will give you your first map. For the second voyage, the hunt for hidden ancient shadows of fate, which takes place across the ancient isles, you will need to first sail to Stephen Spoiled to speak to Merrick. Merrick will ask you to help him recover Old Stompy, a worn old boot. Jump into the water below and you will see Old Stumpy shining around in the rocks below. Hand it back to Merrick and he will give you your first map. The third voyage in pursuit of prowling devilish shadows of fate will see you head to the Devil's Roar. This time you need to head to the shipwreck on Morrow's Peak Outpost. Head up to the shipwreck to the left of the tavern and have a look around. Here you will find the first map lying somewhere in the wreckage. After finding the first map of each of the three voyages, we'll see you head to two smaller islands to collect each of the flames of fate that you will need for the final encounter with Grey Marrow. On each island you are looking for a skeleton with a lamp that is lit with one of the flames of fate. You will also be looking for a map that will lead you to the next island. Once you've collected the flame from the lantern, Shadow of Fate skeletons will spawn nearby. Use the lantern to kill them with the final skeleton dropping a skull of fate as a reward. Finally, you will receive an X marks the spot map showing you the location of Grey Marrow on a larger island. Head to the X marks the spot and you will find two beacons lit with the necessary flames of fate and then finally Grey Marrow will spawn for you to defeat. Grey Marrow also spawns Shadow of Fate skeletons for you to take on, so make sure you have your lantern ready and on hand. 
These voyages can be completed solo with a top tip to come prepared with a storage crate full of food and throwables as well as an ammo crate to make your life a lot easier. Defeating Grey Marrow will reward you with a ritual skull to use for the Fort of the Damned or to sell for doubloons. Mix and match. This one will require some help from your Alliance crewmates. Whilst in an Alliance you will need to light all the lanterns on all the ships the same colour Flame of Fate. My recommendation is to just join up with another ship instead of trying to coordinate with an alliance of more ships, especially if people aren't in game or party chat to communicate. We fought together is pretty simple as you just need to complete a fort of the damned whilst in an alliance. You can do this with your own crew whilst the other ships are in your alliance off doing other things or together as a big team. But if you're doing this, be careful though as you can still deal damage to your alliance crewmates. And also be warned as whilst you're doing the Fort of the Damned, everyone else on your server will be alerted so keep an eye out for people who might try and ruin your fun. A fateful journey. Finally, the last goal is to light all the lanterns on your ship with all six flames of fate. Now once you've completed all 24 challenges, you will be able to get your hands on some sweet new Soul Flame costumes. However, before you get to that point, you can unlock all the Soul Flame weapon cosmetics. If you complete four goals, you will unlock the Soul Flame Cutlass, which is the closest thing to a lightsaber you will find in Sea of Thieves. Completing eight goals will unlock the Soul Flame Flintlock, whereas completing 12 goals will unlock the Soul Flame Eye of Reach. Finally, when you complete 16 goals, you will unlock the Soul Flame Blunderbuss. Now, if you manage to complete all 24 goals, then you need to head to Lorena to purchase the Soul Flame costumes. However, you will need plenty of gold as the whole set of costumes will set you back 1 million gold, the most expensive purchase currently in the game. However, you will be awarded with four unique costumes. The Soul Flame Captain costume, Soul Flame First Crewmate costume, Soul Flame Second Crewmate costume, and yes, the Soul Flame Third Crewmate costume. However, that is not all the Soul Flame items. If you are feeling really up for the task, you can do the Slayer of Fate challenges. If you're able to complete the Apprentice Slayer of Fate challenge by killing 200 Shadow of Fate skeletons, you will unlock the Soul Flame Lantern. Well squad, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Let me know your thoughts on the Fate of the Damned event in the comment section. Don't forget to follow myself and the channel on social media with links in the description. And as always, I'm Sykes, and for more on Sea of Thieves and all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye guys.